Welcome to Mystery Science Theater Presents Linearizing Graphs. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to linearize a graph. So for example, the types of experiments we do in physics, where we will be gathering data, when we graph that data, there are five basic shapes of graphs that we're going to find. And so as we look at the different shapes of graphs, the first type of graph we might find, I'm going to use the generic y and x here, the first type of graph we might find is a horizontal line. In this graph, what's happening is, as x gets bigger, y is staying the same. There's no relationship at all. So when there's no relationship, really, we could usually see that without even having to graph it. So we actually, while we might encounter this, we may not actually graph it. The second type of graph we might see is a standard linear graph, the graph of a line. And a linear graph as x gets bigger, y gets bigger proportionally. And so we use the word proportional to describe the relationship when a graph is linear. Proportional means linear. The symbol we use for proportional is like a little fish symbol, kind of like a Greek letter alpha. And so we say the relationship between the variables is y is proportional to x. The third type of graph we might encounter looks like this. I call this a side opening parabola. Side opening parabola. And the relationship between the variables, as x gets bigger, y also gets bigger, but at a decreasing rate. And so the relationship here, y squared is proportional to x. Now in math, they might call this a square root graph and say y is proportional to the square root of x. Mathematically speaking, that's the same. I like to do it this way though and say that y squared is proportional to x. The next type of graph we might encounter in physics looks something like this. I call this a top opening parabola. The relationship when we have a top opening parabola as x gets bigger, y gets bigger, but at an increasing rate. The relationship here is y is proportional to x squared. And finally, the last type of graph that we might encounter in the types of experiments we'll do in physics is, looks something like this. As x gets bigger, y gets smaller. So I call this an inverse graph. And the relationship here, as x gets bigger, y gets smaller, y is proportional to the inverse or the reciprocal of x. So we can see for the types of graphs that we can see, there are basically three shapes that are not linear. In another video, we learned about how to find the equation of a, a linear graph by finding the slope and the intercept and writing the equation in the form of y equals mx plus b. In this graph, in this lesson, we're not going to focus on the linear graph. We're going to focus on these three types of graphs that are not linear. Because if it's not linear, we need to know how to figure out the equation of the graph. If it's linear, we know how to do that. So we're going to do a process that we call linearizing a graph. Taking a graph that is not linear, it's one of these three shapes, and learning how to manipulate the data so that it gives us a linear graph that allows us to then find the equation of that graph. What you really need to know out of this is you need to recognize the, the, the shape, the name of the shape, and the proportional relationship. That, you're just gonna have to memorize that. That's the side opening parabola, y squared proportional to x, top opening parabola, y proportional to x squared, inverse y proportional to one over x. That, you're just gonna have to learn. Once you learn that, then the linearizing part is fairly easy. Let's take a look at an example. Here's some data collected from a pendulum experiment where we changed the length of the pendulum and measured the period of the pendulum. And after we graphed this, we see this kind of shape right here. So we look at our graph and we, we say, hey, what's the best fit of this? Looks like it could be linear. So I take a straight edge and drawing best fit lines as we know, follows the trend of the data, has some points above and below the line. If I look at this, I can see that my intercept is about 0.8. What that means in terms of the pendulum is that as the length of the pendulum gets closer to zero, does the period get closer to about 0.8 seconds? That doesn't make sense. I imagine that if the length gets closer to zero, the period should get closer to zero as well. So if I imagine a point here, 
I can more clearly see the shape. This actually is not linear. In fact, it is a side opening parabola. So if I sketch in that side opening parabola shape, well, you can see that, that that's a better fit of the data. So what I'm really looking at here with this pendulum data is a side opening parabola. Let me get a little cleaner graph here. Let's go ahead and draw in that side opening parabola. So as I'm trying to linearize this graph, this side opening parabola, I remember that the relationship is y proportional, or excuse me, y squared is proportional to x. Only on this graph I don't have y and x. What do I have? I have period and length. So in this graph, period squared is proportional to length. Now, this proportional relationship is going to tell me what I need to graph in order to linearize the data. Because it's period squared proportional to length, if I graph period squared and length instead of period and length, I should get a straight line. Proportional means linear after all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this column of data, period, and I'm going to create a new column of data. I'm going to call it period squared. Period squared will have units of second squared. What I do to the variable, I do to the unit. And then I simply create this new column of data by squaring each of these periods to get the period squared data. I'm then going to graph period squared versus length instead of period versus length. Here I've done that. I've taken the periods, I've created a new column of data where I've squared the periods, and I've got period squared here. Now I've graphed on this graph period squared versus length. I can see that the data came out nice and linear, and I can get the slope and the intercept. So what I can see from here, this is linear, so I know that period squared, and the symbol for period is capital T, so I know that T squared is proportional to length, and I can see the slope and the intercept here. That means that t squared is equal to my slope, 4.084 seconds squared per meter, times length, plus my intercept, 0 0.07915 seconds squared. This is my equation. So I have linearized the graph by knowing the shape, that it was a side opening parabola, knowing that a side opening parabola the relationship is y squared proportional to x, or in this case, period squared proportional to length. I create my new column, period squared, and I graphed period squared versus length and came up with my linear graph. Once it's linear, I know the relationship, I know the equation, the slope and the intercept, and I can find the equation. Now the really nice thing is this equation, t squared equals 4.089 seconds squared per meter times length plus my intercept this is the equation of this line. This is also the equation of my side opening parabola. I have found the equation of the side opening parabola by linearizing the data and finding that equation. T squared equals 4.089 seconds squared per meter times length plus 0 0.07915 seconds squared. Now, one of the things that we can do to find out if this intercept is significant or if it's negligible is what I call the 5% rule. So let me grab some paper here. Let's talk about the 5% rule. 5% rule, and 5% is an arbitrary number. We just chose 5% as a reasonable uh, amount to be close to. So as I look at this graph and this, this intercept, if this intercept is, it's pretty close to zero as I can see. But to tell if it's close enough to zero, what I do is I, I compare. If the intercept is less than 5% of the greatest vertical value, then it's close enough to be negligible. So I'll say then it is negligible. So in this example here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare this intercept 0 0.07915, right? So my intercept is 0 0.07915 seconds squared. 
I'm going to compare this to 5% of my biggest vertical value. Now my vertical values are period squared, so I'm going to look at my column of data up here to period squared. My biggest value is 6.25. So I'm going to take 5% of 6.250. 5%, when I do math, I convert it to a decimal. So 0 0.05, that's 5% times 6.250. And I push a few buttons on my calculator. 0 0.05 times 6.250, and I get 0.3125. So that equals 0.3125. My intercept, 0 0.07915, is less than 0.3125. Therefore, it's less than 5% of the maximum vertical value. Therefore, it is negligible. And if it's negligible, that means I don't need to include it in my final equation. So I can rewrite this equation as simply t squared equals 4.089 second squared per meter times L. That is the equation. Now, that basic process works for all of the different shapes that are not linear. So if I do an experiment and I come up with a top opening parabola, I know that the relationship is y proportional to x squared. So to linearize that, I'm going to create a new column of data. It will be squaring whatever the x values are and then I will graph y versus x squared. It will come out linear. I'll be able to find the slope, the intercept, and the equation. If I have an inverse, I'm going to create a new column of data. It will be 1 over the x values. And then I will graph y versus 1 over x. It will be linear, and I'll be able to find the equation from there. Thank you for watching this. I hope that you found this informative.